Somebody asked me today why the length of a hex string is always double the amount of bytes that it's encoding. So I thought I would make a quick video explaining what a bit, a byte, and a hex string actually are. Start out by looking at base two, which is also called binary. And let's look at a one bit number. So you can think of a bit a little bit like an empty slot. And in that slot can either be a zero or it can be a one. And there, if you think about that, there can only be two different things that can go in that slot, a zero or a one. So there's only two different total combinations that one bit can possibly encode. Or another way to say two is two to the first power. So if we look at a two bit number, so we have one, two empty slots. Well, now this could either have zero, zero, it could either have zero, one, one, zero, or one, one. So there's four different, or two to the two, different numbers that a two-bit number can encode. And then, you know, this keeps going on and on and on. So if we look at a three-bit number, one, two, three slots, and this can go all the way up to one, 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 or two to the third power, or eight different numbers that a three-bit number could encode. Okay, so then let's look at an eight-bit number. So we're looking at an 8-bit number in binary still. And there will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 different slots that an 8-bit number can have. And if you think about the range of numbers that an 8-bit number can encode, it can go from 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, all the way up to 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. And this is the range of numbers that an 8-bit binary number can encode. And this would be 2 to the 8th, or 256 different combinations could live in this range. And we call this, an 8-bit binary number, a byte. And one byte can encode 256 different combinations of numbers. So now let's look at base 10 which is something that everyone should be familiar with because this is what normal numbers are. And we could say that the range of numbers that one byte can encode in base 10 is zero up to 255. And because this is 256 different combinations with the zero. And this only takes three digits to represent, whereas in binary, this would take eight digits to represent. So it's a lot more efficient to encode and talk about these numbers in base 10 than having to write out the binary each time and having these really big numbers. Okay, so now let's look at an interesting property. If we take the square root of 256, we get 16. And let me erase this over here. And instead of base two or base 10, let's look at the square root of 256, which would be base 16. And this is also known as hex. So in base 16, you not only have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, but you also have A, B, C, D, E, F. So there's 16 different digits that you can use. And if you look at a number like A7, for example, so if you have the hex number A7, this is saying, OK, this is the 16 slots, and then this is the 1 slots. So A is 10. So that means you have 10 16s and then seven ones. So the equivalent in base 10 would be the number 167 for A7. And likewise, the top end of this range for base 10 is 255. So 255, we can say that how many 16 slots is this? Well, 15 times 16 is 240. And then 15 ones on top of that would be 255 total. So you could say there's 15 16s and 15 ones in order to get the number 255. So the top end of this range for one byte in hexadecimal would be FF. And what's interesting here is that this is only two characters versus three characters in base 10. So you could effectively say that any byte can be represented in two hexadecimal characters. Any one byte can be represented in two hexadecimal characters. And you see this, um, you've probably encountered this in your day-to-day -day life as a web developer. For example, if you've ever used CSS, you know that colors, right? Colors are represented as three bytes. 
because you need the byte value for red, you have the right value for green, and the red value for blue, and this can represent most colors that you see on the web. But there's multiple different ways to represent it. There's these values called like RGB, which are base 10, and then these values called hex, which are obviously base 16. So you might see something like 255.16719 as an RGB value, and this maps to its equivalent hex value, 255 we said was FF, 167 we know is A7, and then 19 would be, well, it's 116 plus three ones, so that would be 13. And these are equivalent. These are just different ways to represent the value of bytes in hex versus base 10. It's just shorter in hex because you can encode any byte into two hex characters. So, for example, in Ethereum now, where you might encounter hex values, let's look at an example of something like an Ethereum address. And an Ethereum address is exactly 20 bytes long. So 20 bytes of the address can be encoded as a string of exactly 40 characters, right? Because two hex characters is one byte. So you might say A309 C716, whatever, right? And this string will be 40 characters long, but it'll actually be 42 because the zero X at the beginning, this is just an indicator that the string to follow is encoded in base 16 hex. So zero X is just an indicator to certain programs that the following encoding is base 16. And you can also, you'll see this a lot of times broken up into what are called byte arrays. So you'll just have each individual byte as its own object. So like you'll just have it represented like A3, space 09, space C7, space 16, etc. So you might see an address represented like this, which is just a series of bytes encoded in hex. And also in JavaScript, at least in ES6, we call these buffers. So you can represent data not only as a hex encoded string of exactly a specific amount of characters, but in buffers and byte arrays as well. So anyway, that was a quick answer to why the length of strings is always double the amount of bytes in Ethereum, and I hope that that's helpful.